Unlock God's Kingdom, The Power of Radical Faith In this profound encounter between Jesus and the rich young man, we are drawn into the heart of a pivotal teaching on discipleship, sacrifice, and the nature of salvation. A young man, fervent and sincere, runs to Jesus and kneels, asking, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus immediately challenges his understanding, stating, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. This response redirects the man's gaze from mere human standards of goodness to the perfect holiness of God. Jesus is already beginning to prepare him for the radical truth he will reveal. Jesus then reminds him of the commandments, the fundamental moral guideposts of Israel's covenant with God do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. The young man, full of zeal and confidence, responds, Teacher, all these I have observed from my youth. At this moment, Jesus' gaze shifts. He looks at the man with love, seeing both his desire for righteousness and the barrier that holds him back. And then Jesus speaks the words that pierce like a sword. You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Here, the Lord reveals that it is not enough to follow the commandments outwardly. The call of discipleship demands an inward surrender. Jesus is calling this man to abandon his dependence on wealth, to sever the attachment that holds his heart captive, and to place his complete trust in God. But the cost is too great for the young man. His face falls, and he walks away, sad. He possessed many things, but in reality, it was those things that possessed him. This moment reveals the heart of the kingdom's message. Entry into the life of God requires total abandonment. It requires letting go of everything that competes for our love, loyalty, and trust. Jesus, turning to his disciples, states a truth that shocks them. How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples, astonished, hear him repeat, It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Wealth, power, and status can blind us to our absolute dependence on God. When our security is rooted in worldly possessions, we struggle to rely on the grace of God, to lean into his providence. The disciples, bewildered, ask the question that now hangs in the air, then who can be saved? And in his response, Jesus offers the ultimate revelation of grace. For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God, this is the heart of the gospel. Salvation is not something we earn through human effort or adherence to law alone. It is a work of God, an act of grace, accomplished through faith and trust in his power. The rich young man was trapped by his possessions, but Jesus' call was to free him. Yet, it is only God who can free the heart from the chains of the world and turn it toward heaven. Peter, sensing the weight of the moment, speaks. We have given up everything and followed you. And Jesus affirms the promise of the kingdom. Those who leave everything for his sake, houses, families, lands, will receive a hundredfold in this life, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. The kingdom of God brings both reward and challenge. It is a path of sacrifice, but also of immeasurable grace. In this teaching, Jesus unveils the mystery of true discipleship, a life of radical trust in God. It's not about external wealth, power, or status, but about a heart fully surrendered, a life lived in the freedom of God's grace. What is impossible for man is made possible by God. The question for us is not whether we can be perfect in our own strength, but whether we are willing to give up everything that holds us back and trust in God's ability to lead us to eternal life. In the end, this passage calls every believer to ask, What is the one thing I still lack? What must I surrender, abandon, or release to follow Christ more fully? The answer lies not in what we can do for ourselves, but in what God, through His power and grace, can do in us. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. God bless you.